Hello there and welcome to my first live stream in a long time. Uh, today I want to be talking about getting inspired and as people turn up I'm going to start with a hold on a second having a playback there. I am going to perform a tune that I wrote this afternoon, a bit of improvised stuff and uh, some melodies as well. So we'll start with that as people come in and then we'll get on today's agenda. Here we go. So over to the guitar and hit play. Nice. That went okay. <laughs> um, got to work on my improv there. And today I want to talk about getting inspired. And if you've joined me um, just now, um, today's topic is literally things we can do to keep our playing uh, rather than tip top. It's more just to keep that spark going. Now, I've been playing guitar since I was five years old. Um, and yes, you can argue I could be better and all that stuff. One thing that remains throughout is I've always had, you know, it's been an up and down relationship with music and the guitar, but I've maintained it by keeping the inspiration flowing. It's not always been to do with becoming better, so to speak. However, all of these things do lead to improving your instrument because it gives you that care and attention. So I'm just seeing there's seven people watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is my first one. So I uh, hope you stick about and do say hi in the comments, say hello, where you're coming from. Be good to see you. I hope to do some more of these as we go along the year. Now I'm all set up to do this. I've been very busy at Lick Library, so they've got me set up with these nice cameras so I can do streams to them from home. 
and I thought why not do some for my YouTube channel occasionally as well. So we have a structure today. We have three kind of subject areas. We've got one, practical things we can do to remain inspired on the instrument. Social things we can do. That's the only word I could really think of it. And that is more to do with taking part in music. And then I've got some philosophical stuff. And some of you who may follow my work and stuff know that I do like to sort of rant a bit sometimes <laughs> about things like that. So, okay, let's dive into the first thing. So, first of all, I mean, maybe if anybody's in the chat, you can write a comment. Even if you're watching this in the playback, you know, you can, it'd be good to have a chat beyond this live stream as well, because I think it's something we can all learn from and get cool tips from each other on this subject matter. So, we often, you know, let's first find out why we might kind of fall out with the guitar or instruments. And one, one is probably when we are practicing a lot or we're working on something that's not necessarily immediately rewarding or maybe you're just being too hard on yourself in some way and you just don't want to pick it up anymore or you can't really see you know I, I got I've had this feeling before and I'm sure some of people watching this may have felt this you know especially with social media that you become a bit overwhelmed you see all these amazing guitar players and because we all have egos at some level we sometimes feel like well you know, there's no space for me. And that's not true, because there's only one you. And um, you have your own voice. We all have our own voices. But sometimes we can make that so specific and such an ideal that we forget to kind of honour our own playing. And one way to kind of get out of that stuckness might be to go back to things that you loved when you first started, you know. And the big one here is play simple. Now, it's something I'm really enjoying at the moment on guitar you know, I notice the tendency, because um, I've worked on stuff like this, and it's not always, you know, once I've practiced it, it might be better, but I've worked on lots of legato. I've worked on those kind of picking things. All those kind of things, and they're great, and I love it, and I'm really happy that I spent time doing that. But sometimes that, f I forget, you know, the reason I started playing guitar was because I heard people like Hank Marvin and Buddy Holly and Mark Knopfler and Jimi Hendrix and they weren't doing fast picking runs or anything like that and it wasn't even about the guitar playing I just liked the music and the energy I got from it and some of us may have different stories behind why we started playing guitar maybe different genres of music I also remember being really into System of a Down I remember listening to my friends were listening to like Blink 182 and things like that and Green Day and they were just enjoying playing those songs now you know, I had friends that would learn whole Blink-182 albums and then go and learn some Paul Gilbert licks. And at the time when I was younger, I thought, well, hold on, you've got to be, you've got to be grafting on your guitar. You've got to be pushing your limits all the time. And that's good. You do need to stress your technique. You need to push it further. Um, but, you know, it's also cool to just go back to those simple things. You know, really, if you think about... I imagine most of us watching this... Um, watching this back you know you've probably been playing you're playing guitar for at least i'm hoping you know a few years right and there'll be things that you can do now which you could not do at the beginning of your journey just take account of that and then actually go back to those albums which maybe you didn't learn or those songs you didn't learn but you still love and go and learn them and it can be the simplest stuff it might take you five minutes even less it might take you the time it takes to listen to the song but the key there is to do something that's enjoyable and really fun. It brings the bar down and it also allows you to find some gratitude for your technique which takes you out of that headspace of everything has to be perfect, everything has to be this and that and actually from that you start to find out what you value and I think that's probably one of the most important things in playing is we can often kind of inherit other people's values without really questioning if they're our own values in our playing and going back to your roots is one way of many of course of uh, kind of re-establishing that for yourself. Hey, I'm just going to check in on the chat. I can see some people. John, good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sound Sprit. Um, watching amazing players is a kind of double-sided. You're amazed and in seconds you're angry. <laughs> uh, hi, Aiden. How are you doing? Good to see you. Ah, this is so fun. It's nice to be doing this. I feel excited. Um, it's nice to see some familiar names and faces. Um, hope you're doing fantastic so yeah that the double-edged sword it's good to be inspired 
but I think we can all we all know our own internal barometer where where we are probably being a bit, you know, jealous, harsh, all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so you're going back to simple stuff, you know. And for me, you know, for even just improvising at the moment, I'm, you know, I watched the Jack Gardner video. <laughs> I watched the Jack Gardner video before doing this live stream today. And Jack, I'm friends with Jack. He's an amazing guitar player. But um, you know, I'll never reach that level in my life. And nor am I that interested in being Jack Gardner. I want to be Sam Bell, you know. But at the same time, there's that thing of like, oh, that's really cool. I love it. I love him. And there's also like, oh, ah, I, I, because, because we, when you hear somebody do something you love, it's because you recognise that in yourself. Okay, you, you share a kind of common. We all have this, and that's, you know, we can go to Jack Gardner, Jack Gardner, Guthrie Govan. You can, you know, you can start to relate all these players together, and they all probably heard things in each other which made them resonate. And that's the beauty of influencers. You're hearing somebody's um, part of their kind of internal world, but being expressed through their own limitations. But limitations aren't bad. You know, they've made the best of them and made them into better things. Anyway, I'm going I'm going on a rant. Diamond, uh, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Do stick about. Ask questions as we go as well and also I'd like to know your experiences too like if you have any um you know reason you know anything you, you do to keep inspired uh, or if you're struggling you know let us know and we can have a chat we can have a chat about that so yeah just go back to practical things going simple again I'm trying to talk about this in my own world at the moment so you know there's all these fast things all these things like that I love that stuff but the other side is like you know can I really just play can I actually kind of play what I'm kind of hoping to play? Does that make sense? So if I go... Um, that wasn't... I don't know. It's, it's difficult where you kind of go in there, but the... The idea meaning you, you reduce your playing to stuff you can hear and stuff that you enjoy and often what you can hear and, and, and trying to connect that to your guitar. That actually stops you thinking about all the other people that play guitar and it gets you in tune with what you want out of the guitar and what you're able to hear. Because often, you know, that's, a, that's a great Guthrie Govan video saying he had lots of students who wanted to learn Yngwie Malmsteen and stuff, but he said, well, I can teach you that, but... You know, you can't even figure out how to play Row Your Boat Up the Stream by ear on the guitar. And he's making the point that your ear and your intention and how you feel about your playing all come together in the same sort of area. So there we are. Um, so um, Jeff asks, why did I scratch my strats? This is an old strat. Uh, it's not actually a proper strat. It's a it's a, it's a, a, a custom build from Eternal Guitars. And uh, I just saw this when I went in and uh, many years ago when I met Dave at Eternal and I I just bloody love it. It's so cool. It's got so much mojo. It makes me really happy to play because one of the first guitars that I was enamoured with as a six-year-old was the Strat. I love Strats. I saw I saw you know Hank Marvin, Mark Knopfler, Hendrix. Everyone was playing Strats. Recently though, I'm pining for a Les Paul, but we'll see. We'll get to that one. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. All right. So um, yeah. So let's just recap so far. So practical things. Go back to simple stuff. Simplify what you're playing to what you're hearing. And, you know, you're trying to basically disconnect the jealousy and get into the gratitude for what you can do as a as a way of finding energy again and also kind of realigning your your purpose of playing, you know, what you're practicing. Are you practicing stuff you really want to practice? Uh, is what you're practicing actually serving what you're doing? That's a big one. I was practicing lots of tapping stuff and then actually doing lots of gigs and not doing much tapping, for example. But that doesn't mean I don't do tapping. I mean, I love tapping. But um, that's not to discount tapping. Woo, got to rewind a bit. But the, uh, the idea being we can often be practicing things which are maybe not even to do with what we really want to be doing. So hope, hopefully that makes sense. Cool. Cool. So um, there we are. So, okay, that's moving, moving on. Okay, another one might be a practical thing to keep yourself inspired is challenge yourself in one area and create your own practice routine. Now, there's, a, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guitar tutor by trade as well, so I, 
you know, I make courses for Lick Library and different magazines. It's my livelihood. It's what I do. I'm really lucky. Um, but that's also shown me that I can create my own stuff, and we can all kind of do that. I mean, that's 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 cool. You know, you you uh, you see how other people structure their courses, and then maybe you make your own routines based around licks and patterns and things that you like. Now, one way of doing this is maybe to record yourself improvising, or just record a song, um, and take the bits you like, and then see what they are. Let's say it was a, or, or maybe even bits you sort of thought, I like that, but I don't quite nail that. And rather than it being like, well, I'm not good enough, you can actually just take that one run or something and then make it into a little routine, you know, make variations of it. You know, you could, it could be something as simple as, I'm going to turn off the... Uh... What am I doing? I'm just playing riffs because it's fun. And I'm also a little bit nervous, but there we go. So, um... Let's say I got that picking run there, and it's based upon these groups of six. Maybe I just want to work on. And what I might do is actually compose my own my own routine, you know, my own routine based upon um, some of those things. And what's satisfying about that is you start to kind of create new ideas you start to create variations you make your own thing as Matthias Eklund says you grow your own mustache or your own beard right and that's what we need to do as players we don't there's no point in being you know any other person apart from you so why not take the ideas you've got and that's just a really inspiring thing of course I'm going to get to writing music in a bit because I think that is kind of one of the most important things we can be doing but you know challenge yourself on a technique or something, technique can be anything. I, I see technique as everything from all your basic picking and your legato, legato timing, um, fretboard knowledge. It could be any anything. If you've got some blind spots, if you've got, I mean, for me, for me recently, it was vibrato of the index finger on the lower strings. And, um, you know, just kind of working on how it felt for me because I, I you know when I go when I go on autopilot sometimes my vibrato goes a bit dodgy as probably most of you can hear but there we are so um yeah I'm just going to check in on the chat quickly hey Sam I've been watching you play I've been playing guitar for five, 15 years developing quite a good technique and at the same time many problems with my left hand I've got tendonitis and and, and tunnel oh carpal tunnel is that carpal tunnel all due to the ego thing what 22xx00 Thank you for sharing that. You're right. You start to like you can t when 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 there's this like fight. There's a difference between like caring about your playing and fighting for your playing. Um, and the ego is when you fight, and loving your playing is when you care about your playing. And they lead to different things. It's easier, even now actually, just relaxing. <laughs> as soon as I relax, and as soon as I get out of being anybody else apart from this um things things feel feel more connected and i think that's what we all really want as players is to be able to play what we want okay which is so obvious but sometimes that turns into like kind of efforts where you get tendonitis and you don't warm up properly or you push through exercises and you kind of deny you don't listen to your body or your mind at all and you just end up in a in a bad place and ma mainly as well you end up with a bad relationship to the guitar beyond the physical you end up not wanting to pick it up um sound could it could be useful i think to put away the guitar maybe for a day or two a week and listening to music style you've never listened to but ah listened to before and trying to grab something from it sax player brilliant brilliant um brilliant point there sound spirit. hopefully people can see his comment on youtube yeah um that point put, i mean i <laughs> I, I I really try not to play guitar. Um, I, I listen for when I'm when I'm practicing out of like I, I have to practice all the time. I've had to prepare for gigs, prepare for sessions, and all that stuff. But I make time for life, you know. And that also inspires your playing. You know, I've, I've got other hobbies, I have other interests, and that can really refresh your reset your mind. I think it's healthy to take breaks. 
you know and it's also healthy to to, to put in put in the time um but yeah i think taking a break is good and what you said there about listening to something that you wouldn't normally listen to specifically learning from other musicians that's a really good point i think i did a michael brecker sax solo on here on youtube of the um candy uh by uh, michael uh, it was actually well, who was the I've forgotten anyway it's, a, it's like a pop rap song but anyway michael brecker does an amazing sax solo and i i and that had loads of cool phrasing in it and stuff and I had to it took me out of guitar headspace into music headspace which i think is far greater and far more practical so really good point there sounds but um yeah okay so do something different learn a song of a different style so you kind of got my next point really do something very different i'm going to talk just talk about um a recent lick library projects i've been doing i don't actually think i can play it on i can't on this guitar because i need to tune it a different tuning recently taught uh fleetwood max rumors as a course for lick library and i taught it last week and i love that album i think i remember one of my first memories of music is hearing that album and um and tango in the night as well um but there's also finger picking lindsey buckingham is an amazing finger picking player and I've, i i do hybrid picking you know i love all the kind of you know where you take the You know, I do things like that and of course you know silly things like that but I definitely don't do um, I, I, I couldn't even now you know play I don't have enough patterns to really kind of suddenly demonstrate that on a fly but it was beautiful because I got to pick up the guitar and it wasn't like I'm picking up the guitar and now I'm gonna do my I don't know rock thing or whatever I had to go in and play finger style and it just took it away it gave me beginner's mind again you know it was something i had to completely surrender to and that made me really enjoy the guitar and i managed to play never going back again not that i can play it now um on this guitar and i still need to read the music as i play it because it's too complicated <laughs> but i really enjoyed the process and i think this is it you're, all, you're only privy to the process you, you know you don't know what the result is ever going to be really unless you look back and even when you look back it's a different mindset you can't always remember exactly how you felt at the time Cool. You did a great solo for a car. Do you remember supporting my? What pickups on the strap? Um, these are eternal guitar pickups. So the guy actually winds his own pickups. These are 59s. It's based on like a 59 strap. So very classic. But I'm <laughs> I'm using a quad cortex, and I've got it on a Victory uh, Kraken. <laughs> It's, you know, it does that quite well. I like that. I think it sounds sounds cool to me anyway. <laughs> Jeff, I ditched the pick every now and again and play with my thumb only for a few days, tapping only for a few days back to the pick. Nice, yeah, keeping that's great. Yeah, taking changing up those uh, the way that like the typical ways of playing. That's a really cool thing. Really, really cool thing to do. Absolutely, it takes you out of your usual groove. And then moving on to our next area of social things i'm going to mention make music first of all in general if you don't make music if you're just learning songs or playing covers i do that a lot i teach songs i teach albums i play in tribute bands and i do theater shows with lots of you know covers and stuff i love it personally but the reason why i play guitar is because it's i get to create on it and even if i'm doing a covers gig there's moments for improvisation and that's still creation and even playing on other people's tracks you're still bringing your own personality and even if you're doing covers you're kind of creating it in the moment but the real fact i'm trying to get to here is making music for yourself with no agenda there's a whole kind of culture now of everything being commodified like you you know five tips to be a better songwriter and all this stuff and they're all useful but it's all often talked about in a way how to be appropriate and how to do it in a professional manner and that's really cool very useful super behind that but i think also just like making stuff like a kid like you know when you're a kid and you had a, some pens or some paint or something you just mess about and just you know have have fun taking it seriously about making your own music and don't judge it just do what comes naturally at first and then you'll find your groove a little exercise i like to do 
um, is to try and make your worst sound. You know, what's the worst sound? You know, I mean, it could be literally, you could make up a horrible chord. But what you're doing in here is you're giving yourself permission to start creating stuff which doesn't sound good to you. Or even you could play a melody in a way that's kind of... I'm convinced that's what my sugar do when they put their weird weird cleans over the things. It's just cool, odd stuff. But eventually... Oh, now I've got a little melody. Okay, we can put that for chord. Um. I don't know, you start to, I'm, 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 I'm bluffing here, but the, the idea is just spend time, quality time, not, not just like what I just did there, but you know, time just seeing what comes out, allow it, allow it to be, allow it to be shit, really allow it, like don't, not in a sarcastic, like, oh, look at me being rubbish, it's more like, allow, just, just make stuff and record it and forget about it, make more stuff, record it, forget about it, but make it, it's just fun, I mean, what's the point? Really, <laughs> you know, I guess my, my, my personal feeling around guitar is like you got to make stuff, um, and I don't do that enough, so it's more of a reminder for me anyway. Cool. All right. Hope 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 we're all sticking in uh, right there. Um, it's great to be here. I'm just going to double check my agenda quickly. Um, right. Cool. So some of you may be here. Um, just want to talk about something something happening at the moment. I'm going to move on to the next area of this lesson, but um, some of you may be here because you signed up for this. Uh, and you sign up to my mailing thing, and this is a bit of a uh, an interesting thing for me because I'm trying to get my website together. And I want to, I'm going to be doing a mailing list, and you can sign up um, on my website, sambellguitar.com, and it's just going to be I'm a going to make courses which are really really cheap. That's my first promise, like courses which are like you know three to five dollars maybe. You know, these are going to be very short, simple, bite-sized things. I'll also be doing a newsletter with kind of updates and things and giveaways and whatnot. Um, that's what I hope to do. Because I really need to kind of, I want to make my own space. I work for lots of amazing companies and I absolutely love it. But I want to make a sandbell guitar space and I'd love you to be there. Now I know there's lots of people, everybody's email is chock full of most basically spam and there's hundreds of people on Instagram saying here's a course that's going to make you the sexiest guitar player and all this stuff I'm not promising any of that even though I probably could do that course um, but uh, I'll try and make it kind of subtle and if you're interested in supporting then I'd really appreciate you joining me so sambellguitar.com should be a little notification and there's a got some cool stuff coming up I've had a lot of requests for tabs for my song Gravity keep an eye out over the next few months for that um, um, some stuff about my book actually and I've got a little course coming up as well but watch this space anyway okay cool enough of the uh, plugging I'm sorry about that it's um cool Jeff your website is nicely thank you so much I need to put some more blogs up there and when I do you may get an email <laughs> okay. um, it's no hard, I'm, yeah, I'm not expecting anything, but if you've, if you've benefited from anything I do, I really appreciate you joining me. And if not, no problem. There's lots of great guitar tutors out there, and I understand. So, um, social things we can do to keep our playing inspired. So, number one, number one, and I'm talking here, this is my so-called studio. I live in a small flat. This is technically a bedroom with... <laughs> um, a desk where I spend a lot of time preparing courses and learning sets and music and doing these live streams and I'm sat in front of a screen and it's just a bit it's like a man cave really it's just yeah you know um, and it's all good sometimes I can feel inspired here but what really makes me move in my playing is when I play with actual musicians in a room at volume and if you can jam with friends and write music with friends or play covers with friends if you're not already doing that and if you are doing that but you're feeling a bit kind of lost um, do more of that because that's instantly going to a it's a bit like before it's going to show you what you value it's going to bring it back to kind of what really matters because often 
you know we can be working on our specific techniques and things but we can be forgetting about kind of what is needed to actually sound good in a band and it's not about it's not all about us on the guitar really it's about supporting the music and making a big sound together so jamming with friends is a really good way of getting out of your head um, also developing some new obsessions around gear and sound and live performance and stuff but you know be kind to yourself as you go don't spend too much money <laughs> but jam with friends even if it's just sat with a friend on a sofa you both got a practice amp and you just put some chord sequences together and you have a structured jam that's quite cool have a free form jam but my favorite thing is actually to have jams where you kind of give yourself you know uh, rather than just soloing endlessly <laughs> Maybe that's the chord. You set yourself a cool chord form that you both follow. So then you're kind of writing together. You might, your friend might go. Over the top. And then you take a few solos. And you take the solos, but you're listening to each other play. One person might go. And the other one might go. Finish your phrase. Um, then the other person and the other one might go the other one might come back and the other one might go you know it, so you're not I'm not I wasn't I mean that's actually quite I've just come across an exercise to practice by yourself but um, you know you imagine what well, you're playing off the ends of each other's phrases which stops you thinking about this thing I'm about to do I'm going to do this thing I've practiced ah! but actually you start to what well, I call it survival guitar which I'm not sure it's not the most positive word for guitar but you play how you actually play rather than what you've kind of prepped and you worked out and if the wind's in the right direction and the guitar's at the right height and the action's right and you've got the axe effects of all the all your EQ'd and everything so you have all you know it's not like that it's you play you talk it's like you go to the coffee shop and they say what do you want and you say i just want a normal coffee and they say yeah but we've got these beans and stuff and you think oh god what, what? i just want a coffee so you know um oh, that's a bit of a rant what i'm trying to say is you know it's a real conversation it's a real interaction when you're playing and jamming with other people which again takes you out of your head okay cool very interesting cool nice okay thinking and playing so um yeah take an in-person lesson or go for a guitar retreat um i've had lessons with tom quayle tom monder from thank you scientist had lessons with pin from sixth I've had lessons from paul gilbert i've had lessons from my friends that just play down the road i've had lessons i, I sit with people and i learn you know that's what I'd, i want to do that i want to i want to talk to people i did uh, 42 gear street uh, many years ago that it was in germany henning paulie he does like a youtube channel of gear reviews and he got us all together to do reviews jamie humphreys ross campbell jack gardner um jamie masura from Nightwish, i think was there and you know everyone just sat around talking guitar and we all learnt stuff from each other it, there was no contest it was just playing and going oh that was cool that thing how do you think about this and straight away woof, i mean it's a bit like we're doing here except if i'm trying I, I want you to talk back to me uh, through the chat but um you know you're having a talk and we all find new things out about ourselves by kind of reflecting how other people think so taking in-person lessons and going on a physical guitar retreat is is good I, I do retreats for guitar breaks in the uk i'm sure there's lots of i know andy wood does one in america amazing um you know or, or just take part in events that come and get you out of your own box and that keeps you inspired i think that's something i love to do um I think I had a few lessons with Tom Quayle and his friend David Beebe. Um, Tom's lessons are always very like Jake, Jake Wilson as well. I've had lessons from him. Fantastic players, all, all way above my pay grade. You know, I can't even get close to them. But like, that's the point. You go there to just to learn. You know, and that kind of gives even if you, it's not to become them or be as good as them or to somehow suddenly they're going to give you. No, nobody's got a key. You have the key. That's the real. That's the key. Uh, there is you're in charge of what you do ultimately um, and then finally and this is probably perhaps the first thing and the last thing I'd say as well it's not the end yet but um, 
go and watch a live show, go and watch a gig, go and support a local artist, go and watch jam nights, go to see your favourite band, go to see bands you've never heard of before, go and see a band of a friend that they like and you're not sure if you like them, go and see live music, because this is what it's all about at the end of the day. Again, the guitar, it's just a tool. It's another tool in the... Um, you know, it does all these things, but by itself it does some beautiful things. I don't know, that wasn't necessarily beautiful, but um, it, it's a great thing and I love it. But there's, I think there's there's two sides to being a musician. There's the tool you, tools you use and the kind of the stuff that comes out of the instrument, but there's music as the whole, and the music is a communal thing. It's beyond commercial music. It's beyond what's professional, what's not professional. It's a way of communicating the uncommunicatable so going to gigs kind of reminds us of that we feel it live if, if i remember seeing um who was it i think it was uh oh, it was jamming of paul gilbert actually but um you know it st stood in front of his amp and there's the notes just hitting you in the face and you can't help but notice that another band that did that for me was textures i don't know if everyone is the, the prog metal band they um you know, they were just really, they weren't playing with axe effects or anything, not that I'm against that, but they were playing with like, you know, real amps, just they had their technique and everything sorted, they were like a prog metal band, but doing the real thing live, and like the gent thing live, and it was so powerful, it was just visceral, and the groove was there, and the passion was there, and that went beyond any, you know, YouTube video or Instagram clip of anybody playing, go and see these people live, I, I guarantee it's a whole different ball game, go and see. Um, Diamond Guitaranga asks a good question. He says, "How do you use intervals for your improvisation?" I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, in fact, what I might do, if you don't mind hanging around, I uh, will answer that kind of question a bit later, because I'd like to get onto the final bit of this keeping inspired thing, and maybe we can do a bit of a Q and A just in general. But um, using intervals in improvisation is very important in my book, because it's. Well, intervals are it's melody isn't it it's it's how melody is built but we'll get to that before we move on um oh, i haven't got it with me damn i forgot to do it some of you may know i've released a book i've actually got a physical book you can buy on amazon called creative pentatonic concepts for rock guitar and it's all my you know all this uh, some of you may know me doing all the three note per string chords pentatonic stuff um it's all in there. It's, it's, it's 12 years of pentatonic nerdery all in a book. And I've uh, it's out on Amazon. But uh, seeing as you're joining the stream, um, you can get, if you insert Sambell25 at the checkout of guitarvivo.com, you get 25% off the PDF version of the book. And it comes with a song that I've written as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the comment here uh, a link to how you can get hold of that discount and where you can go. Um, because that is... I've spent about three years working on that book and it's amazing to have a book finally and I try to do everything with pentatonics I try to do it from the build up from like the basic positions you know making sure that you, you know, all, all the stuff that all the pentatonic books have but then more about kind of creating your own sequences and ideas with it and then doing more kind of abstract stuff with pentatonics without being for rock players not being too jazzy as much as I love jazz but I'm not a jazz player per se but um, ways of getting cool chords out of it, ways of articulating more keyboard-like and saxophone-like melodies, um, using different techniques like picking, tapping, legato, and all that stuff. So if you're interested, do check that out. You're supporting me directly there. That'll be for the PDF version of the book, 25% off. And if you're feeling very kind and you want a physical thing, it's on Amazon as well. And of course, I still get the thing there. You'll be supporting me by you buy me lunch. You buy me a lunch and a coffee if you do that, so I appreciate that. Let's take a moment. Right, I hope we're hope all doing well, keeping in there. So the final thing on my agenda, we've looked at you know practical stuff we can do in terms of learning songs that are simple, making our own practice routines or our own exercises based on things that we find interesting. We've talked about jamming with friends, taking lessons, um, of course taking a break, learning from styles of music or genres that we might not typically listen to. Now I'm going to get a bit kind of up my own ass basically philosophical stuff so um you know uh first thing is being inspired about guitar 
we often become numb to things because we assume we, when we start to know things we start to assume things before we know I mean, it's a useful skill you know if you see <laughs> if we see the color red we react in a certain way it's, that's why they use it on stop signs that's why they use it on brake lights that's why you know they make clothing that's red and things like that because it stands out to the human eye and it's not to say forget those things because you can't because they are biologically kind of and physically mentally kind of ingrained but with the guitar, we can pick up the guitar and it can feel like here we are again, like another day at work almost. You kind of, okay, here's where the pentatonic is, here we go, we're doing this is a strat, this is this and that, I'm using these strings, this is the setting. But I think this, in terms of inspiration, keeping yourself inspired, I'd, I'd like you to entertain the idea of potentially discarding what others have done and what you've done in the past. So, you know, forget what Van Halen does. Forget what you did when somebody said, you did that really well, I liked it when you did that. That's poison sometimes to the artist because it kind of, they have a different idea sometimes. Is there a way of approaching the guitar without making it about reinforcing your own identity, either good or bad? You know, people make a whole identity out of, well, I can't do it. I, I certainly did that for a while. and Or they make an identity out of, I'm the best guitarist in the world and all that stuff. Or, or even trying to create an identity. I mean, lots of us come to guitar because it felt like it's a bit of a refuge, right? It's the thing you play and, you know, you, you I don't know why I play that lick. That's, that's one of those licks that you pick up the guitar and I'm always doing it. Um, you know, you pick up the guitar and it's a way of saying, here I am. And that's, all of that is wonderful. I am not saying not to do that. Everything I'm saying here is not true. Find out for yourself. But, um, is there a way of approaching the guitar and forgetting what it is? That sounds mental. One practical way of doing that is trying different tunings. Another way of doing that is playing an instrument which is completely foreign to you in terms of style. So for me, I was playing Ibanez RGs for a long time and then going to Strats again was a little bit of that for me. Maybe using different amp models, different effects and things to get you out of your own thing. But also more, more primordially is that this is a piece of wood with string designed by human beings right you know it's there's no real right or wrong way of doing this a lot of what's right or wrong has just been invented and structurized and repeated by different people over and over again until it becomes the norm right and that's how most of this conditioning okay and that's that's some of it's good some of it's questionable some of it needs kind of uprooting and I'm not saying forget the guitar and unlearn the guitar. You can't do that because you've already probably trained yourself to play and you can hear things and you've had a lot of experience. Not to discount that. But to actually approach it fresh somehow. Uh, that can be you know, doing the different tunings, different effects. You could turn the lights off when you're playing. You could play in a different environment. You could try, I don't know, playing upside down. Anything that kind of just resets that thing and you remember, ah, this is actually just a... It's a play thing. It's not necessarily, you know, it's not the guitar, this is how you play it. Eddie Van Halen did this, so you ought to do that. So that's one thing I would say, suggesting going in that direction in your own way. Also, the next one would be, philosophically, is to really look at how you actually play guitar by recording yourself. See what your strengths, perceived strengths are, work on them, and find new areas within those strengths that you've not discovered before by really diving into them um, and if there's anything you'd like to discard discard it there's no life's too short if, if really if, if you hear something that you're doing you don't like it don't do it you know stop practicing that thing <laughs> do something else ultimately depends what your goals are of course you know let go of anything that's not serving you and see what needs actual genuine work often it's the simplest stuff that does the best thing you know f universal things of practice like timing note consistency, dynamics, not going on autopilot, um, you know, all those basic exercises. I mean, I remember getting guitar books and they'd have these exercises like this. And then fourths. And then fifths. That was a sixth. Anyway, um, the idea, and I was like, well, yeah, it's, yeah I, I want to get on with the all the other stuff but actually this stuff and this kind of goes into those intervals I was taught uh, somebody asked about earlier Diamond said you know being able to actually see your intervals on the guitar neck gets you out of scalic playing 
which is fine. That's good. It sounds good. You can use all these things as tools, right? But um, it's a basic thing you can practice. It's just taking a, a set of a tones in the scale, and these these are the kind of building blocks of melody. You know, if I make up a melody, I might go, okay, a fifth, then down a sixth. Down the fifth. Now, yes, I'm in the scale there, but I'm using those interval jumps to kind of create interesting melodies. I'm not just going just random stuff. I'm actually you know, that was the fifth space lick. I just improvised. It sounded cool because I was kind of keeping that fifths going. That's one way of looking at intervals. The other way, the most important way, is seeing over the chord that you're playing. If you're playing over A minor, can you see where all the roots, minor thirds and fifths are? And can you see where the extension tones are from that? So can you might use an arpeggio to do like E minor over A minor. You know, to get the ninth and the eleventh and things like that. But those are basic things. They are universal. Sequences on the guitar are universal. Rhythms in music are universal. They are used all over the place. So working on those foundational things in light of your perceived strengths and weaknesses is probably a healthy thing to do because it gets you out of the kind of I'm playing like this person right now, etc. Okay, and finally, my final point, and I'm going to get on to some questions in a moment. If you have questions, put them in the chat now because I will be answering and we'll be wrapping this up soon. Um, listen to music with no agenda. Now, as musicians, we get caught up in analysing and focusing on certain aspects of our own instrument. So when we listen to a song, we kind of go, oh, that sounds like a strat, or that sounds like the pentatonic scale, or must be using a messer there, or or, or even just things about you know, that drummers, you know, oh, I like that 16th note. They, because we have to listen to learn music and we have to analyse it to understand it, we can often, um, it can kind of take the joy out of listening to music, which then in turn makes music difficult to do. You know, <laughs> you don't want to do it because it, the whole point of playing guitar is to play music. So can you listen to music with no agenda instead of just like putting an album or a song on and really, really listen and notice when you're imposing yourself upon it. That means you're listening to it going, I don't like that, I do like this. Well, that's cool. Ah, oh, no, I wouldn't have done. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder what they did on that last album. That sounds like a ribbon, like all that stuff. See if you can remember. I mean, go back to when you first listened to music. You know, you weren't listening to it. Um, you were listening to it as a whole. A whole can It was a sound, right? And the beauty is, when you're a musician, you start to be able to see through the matrix of the music, and it's. I find that fascinating, and it's incredibly important as a musician to be able to do that. But then sometimes you can get you can lose some of the magic. So can you put an album on it? Going back to that first point I made, go back to something you, you love, it's very simple. See how it makes you feel. Maybe even make some notes as you're listening to it. it sounds pretty cheesy, but you know, maybe um, you're listening to some high tech guitar stuff because you feel you have to because you're a guitar player. I'm talking from my own experience here. And actually it doesn't really move you as much as I don't know, Forest by System of a Down. Or Jet you know, it, it was um, it's that kind of thing. It's it, it gets you back to that, ah, that that is why I like music, not because um, because somebody can sweet pick at thirty second notes, although that's really cool as well. But you'll just notice your your taste and things, and it will help you find what's important to you. And again, when when you know what's important to you, it's inspiring, right? You you can move with it. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Just going to check in at the chat. Actually, I'll play just for a moment. <laughs> okay. I had something in my throat there, so I thought I'd play whilst it just kind of does its thing. <laughs> okay, um, Jeff says, Speaking of Tom Quayle, podcasts are very inspiring. Tom and the guys are, are always fun to listen to. Also, No Guitar is Safe podcast, great stuff. Yeah, I really love that No Guitar is Safe podcast. Um, for a start, it's one of the first ones I listened to with is it Jude Gold. 
because he gets some of those. He's a great, you know, obviously a pro, and um, it's nice hearing other players' journeys with the instrument. And you know, just the the ver- I think what it really shows as well is the variety of personalities and the ways of doing the same thing, you know, playing guitar. And of course, the Guitar Hour podcast with Tom Quayle. If, if nobody's checked it out, do check it out. Guitar Hour. That is super, super guitar. Just you know, knowledge. That they're talking about. In, they're talking about, If you want to, you know, get a shot of. It's like the Huberman podcast for guitar. That's how I put it. Okay, it's just super intense, really interesting theory stuff, and of course, all the you know, you've got Jake Wilson, who's an amazing guitar player. I did the Jeff Beck tribute with him last year. Incredible guitar player, Tom Quayle, got David Beebe, you got Dan Smith, um, and they have various guests on as well. They had David Beebe. I've been a guest once in the early days. Um, <laughs> I think they're like, nah, no, not now, for me now. But the they've had lots of other great players on as well, lots of great guests. That's, that's worth checking out. I think they've got quite a few episodes. So the Guitar Hour podcast, nice. Yeah. All right. So let me just um. If no one's got any more questions, I'm going to wrap this up. But do fire away. I do have, have a few moments before we finish. So let's just wrap up what we were talking about. Keeping inspired on the guitar. So first of all, practical things. Going back over the things you loved when you started learning them. Now you have a higher level of technique. That's just really fun. Um, if you want to, play it with some friends. You know, challenge yourself um, in a technique that you love by making your own exercises around it actually make your own routine you could use software like Guitar Pro or write it down make your own little routine that you can turn up and sit down and you're working on something created by you for you for your own playing really cool thing to do I've been doing a bunch of um, practice play along practice routines for Lick Library for the Lick Library membership and I think one of the first one of them's out now on the membership but I've done about five or six of them and they'll be coming out over the, over the year um do something different. Learn a song in a different style. Learn from an instrument that's not guitar. Make music with no agenda. Don't even just do what comes naturally. See what see what your innate musicianship is saying without judging it. It's difficult. It's difficult not to get the ego involved there, but to um to get in there. Uh, social things. Jam with friends. Take in person lessons. Go to a guitar retreat. Go to a gig. Watch actual live music. That's like the best thing you can do. And then, of course, going more philosophical and woo-woo, forget what the guitar is, forget what people have done, the history of guitar, and just approach it as if you were an alien. You know, just how is it? You know, what is it? What does it do? And you can do that by trying different guitars, different tunings, effects, or trying to play in different environments, or all that kind of stuff. Um, Listening to music of no agenda without trying to work it out or analyse it or even judge it. Just listen. Just listen and just feel rather than think about it um, and then analysing what you're playing, getting rid of what doesn't serve you, even if it's temporary and working on your strengths and working on the foundations is always going to be inspiring You know, just going back over a chromatic warm up doing some intervals work, doing some practice of rhythms, you know, giving yourself some limitation exercises really bring down you know, bring the bar down a bit and actually you can transcend that bar even further because it actually gets you moving in a more positive direction than kind of banging your head against the wall. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I've got a question here. Um, hopefully I can show that. Um, Bale, uh, he says, what's your best tip for improvisation? Oh, um, okay. So I'm an improviser in practice, even though I improvised through most of that intro jam. Um, my best tip was given to me by my friend Carter Arrington, who's a big, you know, he's an incredible jazz fusion player. And... Um, he uh, big fan of Wayne Krantz. I think Wayne Krantz teaches this method. And the big one is when you're improvising, let's say you've got 16 bars of soloing to do. Break it down into two or four or eight bar chunks. So you limit your... And in those chunks, you've got to make something make sense. Does that make sense? Um I think I'll try and demonstrate. I'll try and demonstrate. I got my. I, I wrote, wrote this little backing track today for this um, jam. Let's see if I can get to the verse. Okay, so I've got I think sixteen bars of this. So I'm going to break it into two, two, four, four. Okay.
towards the end of this clause. I improvised that it's not like a Grammy award winning solo but um, I was trying to think in sections and trying to sort of complete ideas and then, then, then phrase the next idea on from that rather than and this is the problem with backing tracks and how guitarists practice you know you go on a website and it says get the backing track and it's like a five minute backing track and it's just five minutes of playing and that's good for kind of searching it's good for keeping your fingers going it's good for just kind of having a bit of a letting your mind wander over the over the track but in reality when it comes to good improvisation you're trying to develop ideas and as Bobby McFerrin says you know the tip is to keep moving keep the movement going and movement is you know eventually if something's just too linear all the time that becomes blind you can be blind to it you know you can you, know, you become um, it's too much or it's just so much that your, your mind goes now nah, it's no longer interesting so movement is also created by contrast in the phrasing the second tip is within those groupings of bars uh, to use contrasting limitations so you might use I like to use what I call elemental limitations so it might be I don't know um, smooth and sharp very easy one right and now that you can apply whatever remit that you have to search for what that means let me see if i can find out what that means now smooth and sharp we go back to the here we go so smooth might be legato I might turn the volume down and use my fingers Smooth might also be. And then sharp might be a bit more angular, sevenths maybe. And sixths, smooth. Okay, so. Um, quote Scott Henderson here you know this is my teaching guitar playing um, so it's not always going to be great but the idea hopefully you could hear I was using those limitation pointers as a way of kind of structuring what I'm playing so I'm not necessarily relying on licks per se although licks may come out I'm using these pointers and the timings to kind of make statements it's a bit like how I've done this live stream right I haven't just I probably could just talk for an hour or so but it's been helpful to kind of structure it in a, in a kind of loose way and then use that as a way of kind of, you know, manoeuvre around it. You're kind of giving yourself a framework. It's not too rigid, but you're using it to kind of put the improvisation in. And I think that's the number one thing we get lost in with improvisation is we go, where do you start? And giving yourself a time frame and some contrasts is a nice way of getting somewhere. And that's a, that's a practice. That's a way of practising improvisation. And that's also a way of getting out of a, a tough place when... Um, you know you're stuck for ideas and perhaps i should have done that at the start of this stream um yeah cool so hopefully that makes sense so um any other questions as we go i think that improvisation question is a is an ongoing one i would be very interested in you know i want to do more of these live webinars i'll be um happy to do some more specific ones there cool Sam's oh wow Jeff has given me a review thank you Sam's playing sounds modern thank you solid mix of rock blues neo soul moves without too much unnecessary <laughs> sugary Hendrix like licks which some of the current big names are overdoing well I mean some of those phrases I know where you're coming from and I think this is one of the things uh, with the social media guitar movement you know you've got to uh, in, in the desperate attempts that we all feel to kind of stand out this is what I was saying at the start 
about finding your own values rather than the values that seem to be imposed upon you. You know, I love Hendrix and, you know, I can't, I couldn't, you know. You know I love that stuff. But, um, and I will do that uh, from time to time. And it, but it's, it's not, I don't think it's even like necessarily what they're playing. I just think it's the fact that everyone starts doing the same things because it's a way of getting views and things. <laughs> When actually we just need to hear people play as themselves. Mistakes, warts and all. I'm about seven years ago I sort of got fed up of like curating everything I put out and I'm only recently starting to feel more comfortable just here I am. This is how I sound. It doesn't matter. It's, it, life's too short. Just play your guitar, like Frank Zappa says. So there we are. Alright, we've come up to about an hour on this stream. I really, really appreciate all of you who have stuck with me for the, the hour. David, good to see you. You missed a reminder. Sorry. Um, I, I did do a post on Facebook and I did a shout out on the email last week. If you, if you want to be notified in the future about um, upcoming live webinars, then he head up to my website, sandbellguitar.com, and there should be a pop-up that comes up and uh, you've signed up to the mailing list. If you're already signed up to the mailing list, thank you so much. You'll be getting a well, I'm gonna, this is live now, but I'll be you know putting a replay up there, and the discount code for my book. Just one more time, I'm going to put it in the the chat for anybody who may be watching this. So to get 25% off the PDF version of my book, um, you can uh, you can follow that link, and it supports me directly. And if, if you get anything out of what I do, then I really appreciate it. Um, but I'll be back with more stuff. It's really good to see. I think I've covered all the grounds there, have I? We all had a great conversation, Sam Spritz says. Thank you, thank you. And uh, as we do these in the future, don't be afraid to get more stuck in. Um, you can always, you know, uh, if you have any sort of feedback, you can always put that in the comments below. That helps the video. Or drop me a message on Instagram, at Sam Bell Guitar, if you have any subject suggestions in the future. Um, and like I say, if you are signing up to the mailing list, you're helping me out massively on something I've been needing to do for a long time. And I promise not to bombard you as best as I can. Um, I won't be. Uh, I'm sure we can all name a few guitarists that kind of send out a lot of things, and it's the livelihood. Unfortunately, it seems to be the way it's going. But hey ho, all good, all positive. Take care of yourselves. Have a lovely evening, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>